Okay. So listen. <clears throat> you guys asked what type of song you can listen to. That was the breast lover Lecha Dodi. And I sang it in Uman this past Rosh Hashanah with like 10,000 beautiful Jews. Sephardic, Ashkenazi, Hasidic. Reform, conservative, secular, Haredi, tattoos, earrings, nose rings, piercings, and it didn't matter. It didn't matter. You were Jewish. It just didn't matter. If you're there for one moment in that, you realize how much garbage there is in the world. You realize how much there is blockages to experiencing the thing that we all want. What do we all talk about? Ach, dude, ach, dude. You put it on your bumper stickers. You put it in your car. You make nice songs about it. You talk about it in every chumash and Torah lesson. Yeah, but do it. No? How do you do it? The answer is Kedusha. When people think about Kedusha, when they think about holiness, what do they think it is? They think it's, 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 it's what God wants. It's holy. Holy, holy, holy. What does holy mean? What does it mean for something to be holy? And then the opposite. Something's profane. Something's whole. Something secular. What does that mean? What does that mean for us? We're saying that the power of holy song, that holy song can bring you to a moon of mamish. And that not holy song can separate you from moon. Why? What's, what is holy song? Okay. So Rav Natan, in Torah Natan, says something very important that we have to think about, not just for this lesson, but always. Because it's going to make you understand why the sages, why the Hasidic masters, why the Kabbalists, why the Tzaddikim are concerned with Kedusha so much. There's four main spiritual worlds. Olam Asiya, Olam Yetzirah, 
Olam Bria and Olam Atzilut. Four main spiritual worlds that we're concerned with. Okay? The highest spiritual world is completely one. Olam Atzilut. It's completely one. It's called Atzilut. One of the reasons is because it's Etzel. It's near Hashem. It's so near Hashem that you can't differentiate Hashem from that world. That's what we're all looking forward to, this world of Atzilut. What is the singular theme of that world? What is it that's different from that world and all the lower worlds? There's a lot of differences, but what's the main difference? That these three lower worlds have something that that highest one doesn't have. And that highest one has something those three lower ones don't have. The answer is Achdut. Atzilut is completely one. All of the three lower worlds below that, the spirit they're separated. The beginning of separation comes from Olma Bria, the world right below that highest world. And as the worlds go down, it becomes more and more separated until you get to this physical world where it looks like each of us are not one soul. But if we had a moment in time that we can em- enter into a virtual vortex together, the Balatanya says you would see that we are not different souls. We are all mamish one soul. One soul. The fact that we're in this physical world makes us feel that we're separate souls. That we're separate entities. That the world is separate. That Hashem is separate. Everything is separate. Okay, good. Why is that so important? Because that means... That that world that there's only Kedusha in, the world of Atzilut, that's telling you what Kedusha does. What's the function of holiness? What's the function of Kedusha? It unites. That's what Kedusha is. That's what it is. Holiness is not, it's godly, it's this, it's, 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 uh, it's at a shul, it's holy. It's, what does it mean that something is holy? It's special, it's unique, it unites. If something is Kodesh, it unites. If something is whole, if something is not Kodesh, if something is not holy, its function is to separate. The less holy it is, the more it separates. So we're probably thinking this has to do with us as like a group of people. It's the same thing with you. The more you're connected to real Kedusha, the more it must be that your inner world unites your psychological world, your emotional world, your physical world, there must be unity that comes from it. But if you find you're learning really holy things and you feel more confused, you feel more angry, you feel more scared, you feel more terrified, you feel more guilt, it means it's not Kedusha for you. It's whole for you. Everybody with me? I'm just setting something up for us because it's so important to understand this for this, the rest of this Torah, and also for everything. So, so important. When did negativity come into the, the universe? There is none in Atsilut. There is none in that highest world. Why? Because there's no room for it. Because negativity comes from machlok, comes from separation, comes from distinctions. Where was the first distinction? In the world below that, Olma Bria. Why? What's wrong with Olma Bria? Nothing. But that's the beginning of differences. That's the beginning of distinctions. And as long as there's distinctions and there's separations that aren't real, then automatically you give room for negativity. The more those the distinctions become solid and bold and concrete and fences for people, then through the worlds, the more evil, the more negativity, the more bad, the more disconnection finds itself in the world. What does evil mean? Evil means disunity. Kodesh means unity. You want to know if you're getting closer to Hashem, do you feel more unity within yourself? If you don't, it means you're not getting closer to Hashem. If you feel more separate, more disconnected, 
from what you're learning, from what you're hearing from rabbis. It's making you feel less close to Hashem, less close to your real self, giving you less sense of peace within yourself, less sense of peace within your relationships. It means it's whole for you. That's how you know it's a good class. When the response to a very powerful beginning is everyone starts yawning. Just kidding. Nobody gets sarcasm over here. I guess because it was so serious right before that. Okay, good. So now what do we learn? Hine, behold, me shashomeya nagina minagen rasha. A person that he hears a song from a rasha, a singer that's a rasha, which doesn't mean he's a bad person. It means he doesn't have unity. He doesn't have unity with Hashem. He doesn't have unity with the Jewish people. He doesn't have unity with himself. That's what it means, he's Rasha. It's hard for him to be close to Hashem. Why? How can you get close to Hashem if what you're hearing, what you're listening to, is separating you? Does everybody understand that? It's a mechanical issue. It's not, oh, something bad is going to happen to you. If you. It's just a, it's a simple mathematical equation. I'm listening to music or song from someone who doesn't have unity within himself, doesn't have unity with Hashem. So what happens is when I hear that, I also feel that lack of unity. That's why it's difficult to serve Hashem. That's what he says, kashetlo, it's difficult for him. Doesn't say it's impossible. Doesn't say you can't do it. It's going to be hard for you. But when you listen to someone who's kasher, meaning he has unity. Unity within himself, unity with the Jewish people, unity with Hashem. As I told lo, then ad the opposite. If you listen to that music, it's even better than if you didn't listen to any music. That music is going to help you get close to Hashem. This is what we did so far. Because why? Behold, the voice of song is drawn from birds. Not this one. Look at his face. <laughs> what? We did this, you don't remember three years ago, I did the same exact thing, and you also asked me, what's that bird? And someone at the time, I think it was Opera, I was like, dude, you don't know. <laughs> no. No, okay, it's all good. Don't worry about it. It's okay. <clears throat> it's drawn from birds. <laughs> I did the same thing. Okay, great. It's drawn from birds. Okay. Now, before I explain this, also, we have to have one more hakdama, one more introduction, and then we're just going to shoot through the Torah with the show. Where does exile come from? What do Rabbi Nachman teaches? What is the whole exile in Mitzrayim? Lack of dad. And what happens when you have a lack of dad? Why? You're not connected to Hashem. And therefore what? Unity. And therefore what, you can't, what can't you do then? What brings redemption? What does the dad do for you that it brings redemption? And then when you're more united with Hashem, what do you do with him? And you sing and you talk to him. The more you feel close to Hashem, the more you're going to want to talk to Him. It's like if you have a best friend, right? You have a friend, you feel like kind of close to Him. You're going to want to talk to Him, kind of, because you don't... What? Yeah. But if you feel really close to Him, you're going to want to speak to Him more, like a best friend. Now, what if, what if like, it's, it's, it's inseparable? It's like the love of Yonatan and David. It's like the love of Rav Natan and Rav Nachman. It's like, the, it's, like the, it's, like, it's like the love of the Arizal and Rav Chaim Vital. It's like the love of, of all these beautiful, all these beautiful, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and his students. Then you want to talk to each other all day and night. You don't want to stop talking. Yeah? So what was the whole exile in Mitzrayim? Da'at was in exile, meaning consciousness was in exile, and therefore we felt far from Hashem, so we didn't speak. Speak to him. So we didn't speak to him. Okay. So the whole exile is that speech is in exile. Speech is in exile. Yeah. Okay.
How does speech get out of exile? So now everybody listen. We have two paradigms. This is, a, this is a little, I need you guys to really think for a second, okay? I'm gonna make it as simple as possible, but you are gonna have to think. Okay. He's like, okay, yeah, go on. I came to a Torah class. I could, I, I'm ready for this. <laughs> I'm ready for this. Okay. We have four main, just like we have those four worlds, we have four main players that we're dealing with all the time, right? You know, like in movies, there's like the good guy, there's the bad guy, there's the supporting actors, or like in a video game, you have the like, you have your main guy, you have the supporter, you have the one who helps him get all the way, whatever. Okay. Sidekick, yeah, yeah, side, okay. There are main players in the universe spiritually. I'm not talking about people, I'm talking about spiritual realities, okay? Four main spiritual realities that are always interacting with each other, always at play with each other always talking and communicating with you, or at least trying to. What are they called? Abba, father. Ima, mother. We'll say a new terminology just to make it easier. Ben, a son. And Bat, a daughter. It's a family, right? They're a family. But like many families, It's not going so well. <laughs> the, the relationships are not so good. Yeah? Relationships are... <laughs> There's no shalom bayit. Why is there no shalom bayit? Because nobody's able to communicate. And why can't they communicate? Because they don't... No, they, they don't die. Good. They don't know each other. Good. So we're all good so far. This is... Okay. These four main players are also with... Even though these four main players are spiritual realities in the world, they are also f the four main players within your soul, within yourself. Each of you, each of you has a godly soul. That godly soul is main, made up of four main players. They're all one, but in order to understand them, we have to look at them separately. Who's the father? Who's the father? Yeah, I know. I'm not sure if you're meditating or you're about to go into a sleep zone. Oh, okay, good. good. Okay, so I don't want to interrupt it. I don't want to interrupt, sorry. Father is your mind. The father in you is your mind. That's not your brain. Not your brain. Your mind. Your mind is above your brain. Your mind is your consciousness. 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 Your mind is your consciousness. What does that mean? Simply, this is how you experience reality. How do you experience your life? Through your consciousness. Everybody with me? If you're not, I want you because this, we're going to need this all the time. We're going to be Bezrat Hashem together until the end, okay? So I don't, we don't have to keep doing it all the time. We just get it done now. Consciousness. Okay. What's Ima inside of you? What's the mother inside of you? It's your heart. It's your heart. Okay. Now, when we usually think of heart, we usually think of emotions. However, in terms of Kabbalah, in terms of your heart, in terms of the Torah, your heart is actually what you think with. What did I just say before? Your mind, your consciousness is above your brain. So when the Torah speaks about your heart, it's actually speaking more like about the, your thoughts, how you think. Okay. Your heart is what you think with. You think with your heart. And the way you perceive reality is through your consciousness, through your mind. It's going to have to come together. But just... That's good. Can you hear me now? It's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's just for us. Next time. Figure it out. Okay. Your heart. When is there a good relationship between the father and the mother inside of you, between Av, Abba and Ima inside of you? Okay. But wh how does, what does that look like practically? What does it look like when a father and a mother, even if you don't never saw it before, but what do you think it would look like? Peace. What does it mean? They are communicating. Good. 
So when there's unity, right? So when your mind and your heart are interacting with each other, that's healthy, that's good, that's going to lead to good things. What happens when your mind and heart are going in different directions? Yeah. And what happens to the kids? Yeah. Whatever is going on with the parents happens with the kids, no? If the parents are a mess, the kids are going to be a mess. Okay? So this is very important. Why? Because if the mother and the father are not together, the kids can't be. They just can't. So your mind and your heart have to be looking at each other all the time. The more they're looking at each other, the more they're in synchro unity with each other, then the healthier those children are going to be, and you're going to see the children are the main part of this world. The children are the main thing you're looking for in this world. But the father and the mother are the key to getting there. That is that your heart and your mind are aligned. What's the sun inside of you? It's called your voice. It's your voice. Not your speech. It's your voice. That's your voice. Now, when you talk on top of it, I wasn't talking. Hello, how are you doing? That's not voice anymore. That's speech. And that's the daughter inside of you. That's the daughter. Good. So you have four main parts. You have the Ab, the Abba, that's the mind. You have the Ima, that's your heart. You have the Ben, the son inside of you, that's your voice. And you have the Bat, the daughter inside of you, that's your speech. What is the whole goal of this world to bring unity to that family? Both within yourself, both in your actual family, both in the community, both in society, in the world, in the universe, in the spiritual, it's always there. So what's the two things that we need to unite? Abba and Ima, right? The mind and the heart and voice and speech. Okay, good. They're corresponding. Yeah, they're corresponding. Your ability for your voice and your speech to connect. Now, why is that important? Because Rabbi Nachman teaches the Chiddush of the world. Just because you're talking doesn't mean you're speaking. <laughs> it's great. This is like last night. <laughs> I, I know. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I think I might just not have set it up right. There's a good chance.